Hi, today we're here down in Grimsby Docks, the historic Grimsby Docks. Behind me, uh, down the street, is the Grimsby Fish Market. Across the way is the Dock Tower, the famous Dock Tower built in 1852 out of one million red bricks. And across the way is the more modern Ross House, home of course to Young Seafood, one of our largest and uh, most prestigious seafood brands. But today I'm here looking at a much smaller business, the Alfred Enderby, the uh, traditional smokehouse here in Grimsby. I'm here to meet Patrick Salmon, who is the owner and manager of this establishment. We're going to talk to Patrick about a particular aspect that we've been concerned about at Seafish in relation to the exit from the European Union. That issue is the issue of the EU's protected food name scheme. There are around about 65 foods in the UK that have applied for, registered for this designation, and it means they receive extra protection against imitation products. Ten of those products in the UK are seafood related. That's fish, mollusks or crustaceans. And it's very important that post-EU exit, uh, that this designation, this protection afforded to companies like this and their products is maintained and taken forward in some way or another. We're going to hear from Patrick about his operations, about how significant uh, this designation is and, and his views on the future. So I'm inside here with Patrick and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Europeans protected food name scheme. That affords these uh, foods with a distinctive local character uh, particular protection. Uh, but Patrick, I'm interested in what is so special about the smoke products that you produce here? The protected geographic indications are really important and traditional smoke fish here in Grimsby um, has a PGI and that recognises the unique way in which we produce smoke fish. Um, th this is a hundred year old method and it's important that we protect that method of production um, uh, and that's what we acquired the protected geographic indication for. And what kind of process did you have to go through to get the uh, designation? Yeah, that, it's massive. I mean it took several years uh, and lots and lots of people um, talking to the European sort of governing body and, uh, and it's not easy, it's a, it's a real hurdle jumping process. And having got it as a business, um, what is the protective status uh, done for you and, and the product? Uh, has, it, has it opened up markets for you? Um, yeah, sort of. Uh, what you've got to remember is that the protected food names schemes are a signpost for consumers and the trade uh, recognising unique processes, unique products in unique areas. There are only 82 protected food names in, in the UK. Um, there are 320 protected food names in Italy. There are 270 in France. Um, they have parties about them. They, they get really behind them. Um, there's only one protected food name in all of Lincolnshire, and it's Grimsby Traditional Smoked Fish. I understand there are about 10 uh, protected names for seafood generally in yeah. the UK. I mean, there's some examples. There's our Broth Smokies Absolutely. up in Scotland. There's uh, Cornish Sardines. Yeah. Uh, and I think West Wales has a Coracle Court uh, Atlantic Salmon. Yeah. Um, so, so what are the worries for producers like yourself about coming out of the European Union? So the fears were that um, the, 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 um, we wouldn't be able to use the protected food names that is a European system. The... Um, um, the government originally said we would have to trademark all our products and that would be the protection. In what's happened is we've now uh, officially um, acquired agreement by government to have a UK based scheme um, and it will be the same. Um, that's great but what we don't know is whether or not that's going to be reciprocated in Europe. So the Europeans need protecting in the UK, mm -hmm. their schemes do. Now you don't have to be in Europe to have a PGI or a protected food name. As a third party, you can go to Europe and apply for protection. Our fear is if we don't reciprocate the European protected food names in the UK, then why would the Europeans respect our protected food names here in, uh, when we export them yeah. to, to Europe? A quarter of all food and drink exports that are going to uh, uh, out of the UK are of protected food names products.